I'm going to tell you the story of how kids develop volume concepts over the three projects that we've developed for grade five. First of all, kids go through this amazing transformation in the way they think about volume, starting with just things like how many cups go into this bucket of sand, and they can count them, one, two, three, four cups, to then knowing that to find volume, you have to multiply three dimensions to get this new creation. That's really kind of marvelous. And once they set that stage, then they're ready to go on to more complex conceptions of volume and later math. So let's look at how it's done in each one of the modules. In the first project, kids design a bookmark um, and we give them specifications for the height, width and depth of the bookmark, but then they get to put whatever design they want on it. And we do that to make the problem a little easier for them. They don't have to deal with so many constraints and also to make them the size that's easily 3D printable. But it also attunes them to the next, uh, to the three dimensions, next slide, length, width, and height. And so in project one, it's really just about becoming attuned to those three dimensions and that they can each be measured in linear units. Um, then in the second project, we have them design their own Soma cube puzzle. And as you can see from the puzzle here, it's a three by three by three cube. And it's made up of 27 smaller cubes and we can call those unit cubes. And with the Soma puzzle, they look at all the different ways the puzzle pieces will fit together to uh, fill a cube. But it also leads them to efficient counting strategies. So for example, instead of counting out one by one, the 27 blocks that go into this, they could start to think of three layers of nine, which gives me 27 total blocks. And here's an example of how that layering would build up. As they have repeated experiences in that, then they develop the formula for volume on their own and with the guidance of the teacher, of course, and they really understand what it means. Um, so now I'll show you how 3D printing comes into play in that process. So in module three, um, students make a toy on wheels. And this is our little mascot elephant um, who was based on a real toy and a wonderful illustration was made for us. So they're aiming for a toy on wheels. And then in the next slide, Um, the first thing you do is take a hunk of modeling clay and they're told to cut off 30 centimeters cubed. And of course that can be just an estimate, but they have to do some quick problem solving and maybe even some factoring to figure out the dimensions to cut out to get about 30 centimeters cubed. Then they take their hunk of clay and they form it into four wheels. So they get some other ideas about volume from doing that. But of course, clay wheels aren't gonna work very, very well on a toy. So that's motivation for taking it over to Tinkercad, the software that the kids use, um, which is freely available from Autodesk. And um, they model the wheels. They have to understand the orientation of the views they're looking at. They learn about different features of the circle. It's easy to, easy to see where the diameter is, for example. And then they 3D print their wheels, see if they look as they expected them to look, work as they expected to, them to look as they try them out on the toy. But we don't just leave kids in the realm of um, 3D printing. We also have them use traditional craft materials to create the rest of their toy. And here you can see in the upper right, uh, toy on wheels that was made out of cardboard and a soda bottle. 